PS5 Pro is real, it is expensive, but is it worth it? Let's talk about it. Hello there everybody and welcome to The Comfy Spot. My name is Tyler and today we are going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 Pro, its high price, and whether or not I feel that it is worth the giant asking price that Sony is putting on to the PS5 Pro. Yes, after months and months of rumors and speculation, we finally got the official reveal and announcement of the PlayStation 5 Pro, and it is also coming later on this year, in just a few months, on November 7th. Now, aside from questions regarding what the technical improvements of the PS5 Pro were going to be, perhaps the biggest question surrounding the console was its price. And now we know that it is going to cost 700 US dollars, which is a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Just like the PS4 Pro before it though, the PS5 Pro is a refreshed version of the original PS5 that came out in 2020, and it features some technical improvements. But here's the thing, that $700 price tag is raising a lot of eyebrows, and it's the biggest point of contention that many have with the new console, myself included. To be clear, I don't necessarily have a problem with that price point right there. I don't think it's horrible for what it's being offered from a technical perspective. You see, the PS5 Pro, it's boasting a two terabyte SSD. It is touting a better GPU that'll provide higher frame rates and fidelity modes and higher resolution and performance modes. It's also gonna have advanced ray tracing for better lighting and reflections, and it's also going to have Sony's AI-driven upscaling technology called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, which will provide more detail on screen. Now, I am by no means a tech whiz at all, but I do know that getting all of these features in a console at a level that is comparable to high-end PCs is going to require a fair amount of money. The thing is, with that being said, the benefits of these features haven't really shown themselves to be worth that high $700 asking price. Don't get me wrong, being able to play games like Marvel Spider-Man 2 or The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered at 60 FPS with all the bells and whistles of Fidelity Mode turned up to the max would be great, but is that something worth shelling out so much money for, especially when they play perfectly fine and look amazing at 30 FPS? Ray tracing is great and all, but will it be a night and day difference when compared to a game playing on a base PS5? The extra pixels of detail that I would get from PSSR are cool, but am I really going to see the difference when I'm playing when I would have to zoom in tight on a scene and pixel peep just to notice them? My answer to each of these questions is a resounding no. The base PS5 has done a great job with the games that have come out for it, and there really hasn't been many games that make me feel like the console is being pushed so hard that it needs an extra little bit of power. It's a different story from the PS4 Pro, which did face some of the same criticisms regarding how necessary it was, but the features it brought were at least much more tangible and novel at the time. You know, 4K resolutions were just starting to enter the mainstream back in 2016, as well as HDR content, and the PS4 was also being pushed much harder back then, so the performance improvements were quite noticeable. The PS4 Pro was a console about catching up and future-proofing until the PS5 arrived, whereas the PS5 Pro feels like a console is being done because it's expected, but not because it's actually needed. And adding insult to injury is the fact that the PS5 Pro is going to be a digital console, so if you want to use any discs with it, you have to purchase the separately sold disk drive attachment for how much? $80. Oh, and if you want to also stand your, uh, your console up vertically, you have to buy the vertical stand separately, which will also cost you another $30. So, if you want the full PS5 Pro experience that with the console, with the disk drive, and the vertical stand, that's going to cost you $810 US dollars before tax. After tax, you know, you're gonna be looking at a price that's over $850, which is wildly expensive for the console space. We haven't seen a console this expensive since Sony themselves put, put out the, uh, the 60 gigabyte PS3 back in 2006. And we all know how well that turned out for them. You know, that was $600 and that price point was not what it needed to be for that console. So them putting out the PS5 Pro at $700, is a pretty ballsy move, all things considered. But here's the thing, at the same time as all of this that I'm saying right now, we're in a different world than we were back then when the, two, when the uh, PS3 came out in 2006. You know, it's a different world than the one the PS4 Pro launched into. We're accustomed now to buying phones every single year that are incremental upgrades from the last one for prices that start at a minimum of $700. 
So while charging that much for a gaming console is insane when you say it out loud, it's not so far-fetched when you put it in perspective that people will pay money for technology. They'll pay big money for technology that they want. And unfortunately, you know, there's also the reality that high-end consoles aren't getting cheaper nowadays. They're only getting more expensive, unfortunately. The thing about the PS5 Pro, though, is that it's clearly meant for a very specific audience. It's for the diehard fans who want the bleeding edge of Sony's gaming hardware and the simplicity that comes with it, as well as those who have yet to purchase a PS5 and they want the best version of it. If you fall into one of those two camps, then the PS5 Pro is likely a no-brainer purchase for you. But if you already have a PS5 and you're happy with what you've gotten out of it, then you probably weren't planning to get a PS5 Pro anyway. Not unless, of course, it was going to be close to the price of the current PS5, and that's something that, unfortunately, was never going to be the case. I myself am not in either target audience for the PS5 Pro, and that's okay. I didn't get a PS4 Pro at launch because, on top of not being able to afford it, I also felt it wasn't necessary for me. You know, I did eventually get one thanks to a trade-in deal that I took advantage of, but I wouldn't have even done that if it wasn't for Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out. And to be completely honest with myself here, it would take games like Grand Theft Auto 6 and Kingdom Hearts 4, games that are at the top of my most anticipated list, for me to even consider the idea of getting a PS5 Pro. And that's a sentiment that I imagine is shared by many others who also don't feel like the PS5 Pro is worth the money to them right now. At the end of the day, I'm not vehemently angry at the price of the PS5 Pro, nor am I trying to tell you that you should not buy one. I'm simply shocked at its price. There's a market for this device, even if it is a small one, so it's sure to sell within expectations. I mean, Ampere Analysis is predicting that it'll sell 1.3 million units within the launch window and 13 million units by 2029. Those numbers are comparable to the PS4 Pro sales of 1.7 million units at launch and 14.5 million units throughout its lifetime. If the PS5 Pro appeals to you and you can afford it, then by all means, splurge and enjoy all that it brings you. I really hope you do, trust me. At the same time though, I also don't think you'll be missing out on anything too revolutionary and game-changing if you choose to save your $700. Let me know your thoughts on the PS5 Pro down below in the comments section. What do you think of it? Are you interested in it? Are you excited for it? Does that $700 price tag entice you? Does it push you away? Are you going to buy it at launch? Or is it gonna be a down the road purchase for you? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications that way you know as soon as new videos go live. My name is Tyler, this has been The Comfy Spot. We'll talk next time. Have a good one.